Hey Morningstar, call me crazy, but I'm going to talk again this week about a government decision. Uh, this time the debate surrounding whether or not to remove the Confederate flag from its prominent place on the South Carolina State House grounds. And I'm filming this blog on Tuesday right after the South Carolina Senate voted for the third time, this time 36 to 3, for the removal of the flag. By the time this blog gets posted, the South Carolina House of Representatives may have very well arrived at their decision as well. All this legislative action follows in the aftermath of the shooting three weeks ago, which took place uh, during a Bible study at Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina, a shooting that left nine dead, one of whom was uh, Reverend Clementa Pickney, a Methodist pastor at the church. Pickney was also the youngest African-American ever elected to South Carolina's legislature where he served as a senator. Now, the man charged in the attack, the shootings, a guy by the name of Dylan Roof, had actually gone online and posted photos of himself holding a Confederate flag uh, along with writings laying out hatred for several minorities. So, now, while many in the South would, would argue in defense of flying the Confederate flag that, hey, it was never the official flag of the Confederacy, it was just a battle flag, the truth is many of uh, people then and now see it as synonymous with slavery, segregation, and government-sanctioned racism. One South Carolina senator actually argued that the Confederate flag was a witness to the thousands of young men who gave their lives on the battlefield for the Southern way of life. Now, I'm not sure many of them or us would feel the same way about, like, the nation of Germany flying a swastika Nazi flag over its national capital building, a flag that symbolizes, hey, willingness to go to war to continued uh, state-sponsored injustice and outright oppression and genocide of people. One of the more compelling statements I heard was actually from a senator who said that, hey, they should do this. They should remove the flag, not because of recent racist-motivated shootings, even the tragic loss of one of their own fellow senators, but rather because it was the right thing to do. That nowhere should we hang up flags or symbols in public places that speak to the injustice and oppression of others. Now, despite growing up in Southeast Missouri, I'm not a Southerner, and it's evident I'm not an African-American. So I speak into this conversation only as a follower of Jesus. And as I try to do with any issue, I actually look to the words of Scripture as my ultimate authority. And I think the words of the Apostle Paul actually in, 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 are relevant, the words that he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And, and, and here Paul is speaking about whether or not it's actually right, okay, to eat meat that had been sacrificed to idols. Uh, he first made the argument that you know, hey, there, there really aren't other gods, so those idols, so-called, don't even constitute a real point of contention. But, and he said big but here, the bigger issue at stake is the welfare of others who were either new Christians or, or weren't yet followers of Jesus. Namely, that as followers of Jesus, we shouldn't use our liberty and freedom to do what would cause other people to stumble in their faith that we could refrain from eating meat sacrificed to idols instead of adding to the confusion or adding obstacles to others. It'd be like us, that if we were uh, trying to, um, if we had dinner with some folks who were trying to overcome alcohol addiction, we wouldn't exercise our liberty and bring out a bottle of wine or a glass of beer in their presence. Instead, we would exercise our freedom to not do what we could do to not do what we could do in an effort to put others' needs in front of our own. And friends, that's the real issue that I see at stake here. Whether or not we would be willing to put aside our own freedoms, our own liberties, and choose to put others in front of ourselves. As I said this past weekend, instead of continuing to sit atop our high horse, we heed the wisdom and direction of Jesus and get off our donkey and serve the needs of others. So I think... Uh, I should probably stop right there, leave the real important issues, like what to do with the Dukes of Hazard and the General Lee, to the very astute, well-considered, thoughtful folks on social media whose words always seem to be seasoned with love and grace, as well as sarcasm, which I just used. Sorry, couldn't resist. Seriously, folks, can I urge us 
all, urge us all not to use our freedom to speak whatever we want on social media, on this issue, on every issue, without regard to responsibility. Remember, there are always two sides to every issue, and when we polarize ourselves and demonize those who don't agree with us, evil will always, always, always win the day. So let's just focus on being the church, announcing and demonstrating the loving rule and reign of Jesus wherever we go this week. And I can't wait to be back in worship with you this weekend. God bless you.